Nicola here and it's Jessica from Side for Us. Welcome to our STEM sessions where we bring science to you at home. We make science available and accessible for everyone. Do we always start off with 60 second experiment so we're really gonna try our hardest to try and do this in 60 seconds yeah so um we have the earth the sun and the moon and we want to create a model where the earth orbits the sun and the moon orbits the earth because that is what happens so we have to cut out for this you can draw your earth moon and sun if you want and you could just draw strips and you'll just need some split pins are you ready jessica i'm ready go A few moments later. Finished. One hour later. Right, okay. Done. <laughs> I think I was close to 60 <laughs> seconds. This model is to show that the Earth orbits the sun. So it goes around like this. And we know this takes 365 days on average. And three quarters. And then the moon orbits us. And like we learned last week, this takes 27, around 27.3 days. Sometimes may see 28. And that is the connection between the sun, the earth and the moon. So this week, all our experiments are going to not only be in the sun, but are all going to be centered around our sun. So we always like to start off by giving you a few facts about the sun. So we know that the sun is actually a star and it is at the centre of our solar system. It's predicted to be around 4.6 billion years old and at this moment in time it's halfway through its life. So our sun is middle aged. So the sun itself, light from the sun itself takes approximately 8 minutes to reach us here on earth and that is because it's 150 million kilometers away from earth another fun fact is that soul the word we get the word soul um, from the latin word that means sun that's why we call it solar system solar energy all things that are derived around the sun have the word soul in it cool so now what we're going to do is we're going to try and make a re little representation of the sun in our bottles so what you'll need for this is just a plastic bottle some water oil and yellow food coloring <clears throat> So the first thing to do is to pour some water into your bottle. Then the second thing you need to do is put some oil in your bottle. So. Yep. And then the last thing that you need to do for colour is to add some yellow into it. So you can just use a pipette or a spoon. And then, you just want to give it a good shake. So what you should start to see is that there's little things that, that are created in this bottle. And that is actually true. And this is because the sun is made up of so many different plasmas. It's about 70% of the sun is made up of hydrogen. About 20% of the sun is made from helium. 2% is made from other gases and so forth. So our sun is made up of so many different particles, which is represented in our little bottle. So let's move on to our first experiment. 
Um, for this, you just need some paper and some different objects that you can find around the house. You want to see the sun's ability to melt things. So another fact about the sun is that it can be up to 15 million degrees Celsius in heat. We know the kettle boils at 100 degrees Celsius and that is very hot can burn us. So imagine 15 million degrees Celsius. That's why in the sun it's so far away, like we said, but we can still feel its heat. So we're gonna get a few objects and um, first of all, create a table because we want to make a few predictions. So when we predict in science, we try and have a guess of what is going to happen. So we want to guess the outcome of the experiment before we do the experiment. So we just want to create a table of different objects. And like I said, we're going to try and predict if they are going to, to melt. So we'll put object. Then we're going to put melt. Yes, slash, no, and this is our prediction. This is our prediction. And we're gonna do it. And here we're gonna put our outcome. So did it actually melt? Outcome, melt, yes, slash, no. Okay, so the objects that we have our paper clip we have some butter we have some ice we have crayons and we also have some chocolate and last but not least we have Pin. These are our objects. So before we start, we're going to make some predictions. So our paper clip, do we think it's going to melt? Well, I don't think it can. No. Butter. I think it can. Yes. Ice. Definitely yes. Crayon. No. Chocolate. Mm. Mm. yes pin no okay we'll get another piece of paper and we're just going to place our objects in the sun i have some ice i'm going to place this in the sun i have my pin I'm going to place these in the sun. This is my butter. And some paper clips, did I say? What else is on my list? Crayon. And we have some chocolate. And what we're going to do is leave this in the sun and we're going to come back to it and then we're going to fill out our table and see if our predictions were correct 20 minutes later okay so the paper clip did it melt no nope. we can still see the paper clip it's not melted butter melt no it's looking a bit more loose than it was yeah we can say yeah that's melted the ice definitely melting if we lift it for longer it would be water we can see that our whole piece of paper is wet because of the ice to our surprise the crayon has started to melt and change shape um before we put it there it wasn't so bent it's actually started to get a bit softer so the crayon does melt in the sun so our prediction there was not correct the chocolate you can see it even touched the crayon and has melted it is no longer the block it used to be and did our pins melt no metals can melt but you have to have extremely if it was closer to the sun maybe we would have seen it melt so we predicted we got most of them right 
crayons tricked us out, but we can see the power that the sun has. So this is part part of the same experiment, but this experiment we're looking um, at the effects different colors has on the ability for them to absorb and reflect light. So different colors reflect and absorb different wavelengths of the light that is produced by the sun. So we have some black paper, we have some blue paper, pink paper, yellow paper, green paper, and white paper. And what we're gonna do is put ice cubes on a different colored paper. And we're leaving them out in the sun. We want to see which ones melt and the rate at which they do melt. Okay, so for this experiment, you just have to really watch, be patient, and see the different rates at which they melt. Okay, so we've come back to our ice on colored paper. And as we can see, the ice block that was on the black has disappeared. The ice block that was on the blue has also disappeared. And the ice block that was on the dark pink one has also gone. But we've still got some ice block remaining on the yellow and the light blue paper and also the white. So what does that tell us? This tells us that the black absorbs the heat from the sun and that's why it was able to melt the ice the quickest. So that's why now we don't have any more ice block on there, but we've just got pure water compared to the white where, which doesn't absorb it and it actually reflects heat. Um, so that's why, you know, we still have the ice block on there because the heat isn't touching the ice block. So it's not melting it. So that is really why your parents say to you on a summer's day, do not wear dark colours because all you're going to do is just absorb the heat and that's what will cause you to sweat even more. So next time, listen to your parents and you understand the science behind it. going to need is uh, four water bottles with the water inside you're going to need four different colors of food coloring you're going to need a large box which you can hopefully take on each side as well um, and then some scissors and pen and foil okay? so what you should do is take your large box and first tape it down if it needs to be taped down with your foil, you're going to want to cover around it. So what you need to do is get two bottles of water, cut off and go around it, and then we're going to cut a hole. Okay, so now we've cut our holes in our box. Then we can put this to one side. And now if we get our bottles of water, so you're going to need three of them to have a colour and you'll leave one of them with just water inside. Okay? So we can have blue in one, we can have red in the other and then we can have yellow in the other. Okay? Then if we go back to our <coughs> box, what we need to do is we need to just put a small hole on the side and this is going to be like the place where you're able to see what happens inside the box okay so now we have our um, bottles so what we're going to need to do is put the different bottles in the holes so we start with two so we can put the yellow in so now using your little hole should You can see your colours all illuminated in the box. Okay, so the reason for this is when the sunlight hits the water bottle, it actually causes the light to change direction. So this is why the colour that we see in the bottle, we're able to see it all over the box because when it hits the bottle, the um, light rays slow down and then it can bend and we see it in all directions. So that's why with the blue, the red and the yellow, 
we were able to see like a magical box inside. But then, when we put the normal water bottle inside, there was nothing magical happening. And this is because the A is no color. So when the light hits it, all it's going to hit and all it's going to bend and reflect is what is inside. And obviously there's no color inside, so it's not really reflecting anything magical for us to see. So the next experiment, and we're going to be making a coffee filter paper sun capture. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for this experiment, you're just going to need some paper plates, some coffee filter paper, and then like arts and crafts, um, because you can design your coffee filter however you'd like. Then you will need like a little bit of water where you can hopefully spray stuff out, and that is it. So if we take our coffee filter paper. And then if we carefully design this, so we can even make it like the sun. Then once you've done that, if you take your like spray bottle and you're just going to dampen the coffee filter paper, but don't drench it, just slightly dampen. Okay. Then what you do is you just wait for it to dry, so you can leave it in the sun or leave it wherever, and then once it's dry, then we'll come back to it. Okay, so you know at Cypher Us we love to bake. And normally we use an oven but we are going to make our own solar oven so we've explained that solar power can be used to do many things we saw that it was used to melt because the sun's so hot 50 million degrees celsius so we are going to try and make an oven so for this experiment you just need old pizza boxes we have some old pizza boxes you need some black paper and why black that is because it absorbs all the sun's heat you need some foil this helps with reflecting those sun rays some cling film this is transparent so it also helps with the it helps the sun rays to travel through it some marshmallows we're going to try and melt the marshmallows with some biscuits they could be any biscuits of your choice we have malted milks and then some galaxy and earlier with our predictions we showed you that galaxy is melted by the sun but we want to try and create like a marshmallow chocolate sandwich and the only heat that we're going to rely on is the heat from the sun so the first thing in your pizza box if you draw basically a square within a square because we just want this top bit to be cut out so you should have a hole in your pizza box in now cover the bottom part of your pizza box with some black paper if you don't have black paper you can also use foil okay. and we said we're using black why because it absorbs all of the lovely heat. so cover your box it's okay if it even gets on the side i'm going to put some foil up the side because we want all those rays to just be bouncing and reflecting in our solar boxes On the side, you could just cover it with some foil. And now, because our pizza boxes had holes on the top, we are going to just cut another piece of cardboard a square and we're just gonna pop it here so that we have a flap that we can put up and down. Okay. okay. So if yours didn't have a if yours didn't have any holes, you could just create a flap. You know, you could just cut the top bit here and have your flap already. So your next stage is to wrap this flap that you've just cut with foil. You can already see it shining. 
imagine it's like sunbathing. We want it, all those rays to be coming here and bouncing in to our pores. Yeah? So, the next step is to sellotape this in. So we have a movable flap. In your box where you can see any gaps that doesn't have black or doesn't have foil, you can just start to fill it in. And you can also decorate your ovens. Okay, so we're just using some tissue for hygiene for when we decide to put <laughs> stuff in our oven so that we can keep using it. Because okay. if we put it on the black, um, then, that's it. then that's it, you should be able to use it. So we can already see that these rays are just great. What we're also going to do is to help our oven. So you know that ovens have like a door mm -hmm. and you're trying to keep as much heat in as possible. And there's certain objects that light can travel through. Okay. So if it's transparent, like this, you can see through it, light can travel through it. And then you have translucent objects that do let some light through. It. And that's like your bathroom. Sometimes you may have like a translucent window on there. Yeah. So if we have opaque objects like black, light can't travel through it the light is absorbed. So we do need that at the bottom part. Once the light is in our box, that's why it's at the bottom, so it can trap all those yeah. So you have your flap up here on, so you should have like two flaps now. So on the part that is cut out, we're just gonna put some cling film over it. we have this here catching our lovely sun rays and you can still lift this bit up so that when we're ready to put our snack in it works so we have the three dimensions to our oven now the last bit is to actually put our stuff inside it so we're going to get our molten milks chocolate And then we also want to put marshmallow into our ovens. We hope they bake, bake, <laughs> bake into our oven. So we want to close our oven, make sure it's sealed nicely. You can see that. And then, yeah, you could just use this as a prop to just keep it open. We're going to leave it in the sun to catch those rays, and we're going to come back to our oven. And that is how you make a solar oven. So we hope you enjoyed all of the experiments and you got to just see how amazing our sun is. Yep. We're going off to eat our marshmallow surprises <laughs> in our oven. <laughs> um, and remember, if you've done any of the experiments, to send it in to yep. us. We'd love to see it. Hopefully you're enjoying the sun. Um, like we try yeah. to <laughs> but stay safe and we will see you next week take Bye. care